What up my freaks, ruinous in sight here with part 12 of my Total War Warhammer 3 Ikit Claw Immortal Empires campaign. So as we saw last time in an absolutely massive and disgusting ambush, Ikit Claw's Howling Warp Gale Spam destroyed the army belonging to Orion while his, uh, as rattling, well not his rattling guns, but the poison one Globadiers and the warp fire throwers obliterated the ground units to hilarious effectiveness and similarly for the air with the other units. It was pretty great, we didn't take too much damage and Orion's faction should now be, if not dead, very close to it. Yeah, they still have three territories that we'll have to destroy and a small little uh, army here but it looks like they're building a bunch of aerial units as well and as we've seen that doesn't seem to go so well for them. Now we are going to move forward I think I forgot to uh, auto resolve this little army here at the end of the last episode so let's get that immediately like so and obviously auto resolve it just gonna check that nobody's gonna die here it doesn't look like it good Alrighty, and hey, what do we have here? A Warp Storm Scroll. Spell Resistance 25 and Direct Damage Area Ability Speed Reduction. Well, isn't that just lovely? What do you currently have? The Trickster Shard. Take the Warp Storm Scroll instead. I don't think you need the Trickster Shard. You guys can't carry arcane items anyway, despite the fact that you're casters. Yes. Okay, now you are going to move forward a little bit. Can we got to resolve this? What do we have in terms of defenses here? I mean, yeah, they have like six units of aerial units with uh, with the garrison, but that's not going to matter. Uh, let's auto-resolve it. There's really no point in dealing with this because our Howling Warp Gales will make sure that that battle is just as easy. So you do this, we shall auto-resolve it, just presumably, yeah, and we're not even going to take damage to the auto-resolve. Decisive victory, low casualties, unsurprisingly. Nice job, looks like some Skaven Slave damage, but that's not a big deal. Decent amount of food as well. Uh, do we sack this? I feel like we can't move away. I'm almost actually tempted to take Paraval, mostly because we keep using food and we're not really gaining anything out of it. And on top of that, and I could be mistaken here, but I think below us, this territory had a pasture, which would mean food growth. And also, it's just annoying that we haven't been using food. This will cost us what? This will put us down to yellow. Hmm. I could just take it to tier 3 and assume that it'll get held. Hey, you know what? Let's take it to tier 3. I don't want to go too low or too much investment on this because there are better territories to take. And while we could, I'm sure, take it to tier 4, I don't really see the need right now. Well, let's loot and occupy it at tier 3. I like so, and now we got another Trickster Shard and Obsidian Amulet. Workshop upgraded. Oh, isn't that lovely? We must have leveled up our Warlock Engineer. Yes, you're at rank 15 now. Ooh, I want to check that out. Just drop everything and look at this for a second. Uh, what do we have here? No, don't care. Don't care about the 13th scheme. Forbidden Workshop. So yeah, we are now here. What do we need to do for this? Ensure that the following building has been constructed. Warpstone Reactor. That's all we have to do? Warpstone Reactor? Wait, wait. That's the tier four. Is it or is it a tier five? That's this building, correct? That is the tier five. Well, to be fair, Miragliano should be getting it within, let's see, six turns plus five turns plus whatever number of turns. Yeah, like fifteen to twenty turns. It's not bad. That's not bad. It should be pretty reachable. Or within our reach, you know what I mean. And yeah, we're still green in terms of food, and honestly, I actually wanted the control to drop because it would help us get a few more rebellions. Now, Paravon, I'm not expecting you to generate a lot of cash, I just want you to get the uh, Warp Bomb ability here. And you can grow yourself, and yes, it does indeed have a pasture, so we'll want to hold on to this. And if we do ally with the Massive Orcal, what we could do is essentially take these territories and allow the Massive Forcal to take everything here, maybe even give them some of these territories, and fight with those guys, while we take, for example, Helmgart to prevent anybody going south through this, similarly for Fort Saul, and essentially isolate the areas like this, and hope that the orcs can keep uh, the Bretonians under wraps. We also probably need to destroy Carcassonne, and because they have the... Uh, they're one of our victory objectives. Yeah, destroy Carcassonne and occupy 30 sons. Yeah, and we do want to reach the short victory, although the recruit rank plus 3 isn't a big deal. And the long victory gives us global recruitment... Oh, 
The Skaven have some pretty terrible rewards, to be perfectly frank, for their victories. No casualty or punishment, no, uh, no magics, nothing, really. Just replen just uh, recruitment, so meh. And definitely meh there, but what can you do? Also, I think we're just going to keep these territories around for a little while. May even take the King's Glade back. If somebody takes them, well, more power to them, but uh, we'll see. Oh, and these places all will, however, rebel eventually, won't they? What are we at here? Even without the growth coming in, we're at minus 11 because of provincial instability. Well, that'll be dropping down. Um, but the Skaven corruption will increase, which will prevent this. I suppose we could eventually switch us to efficient planning, but the main reason I wanted to keep these territories was to keep exploitative planning around for as long as possible. Now, we can't build the Taskmaster's platform either, and frankly, I wouldn't want to waste money on that. Hmm. Well, you know what, just do this for now, and then if we delete them later, we delete them later. No uh, no big deal either way. And we don't need to build this or this then, because we don't actually uh, want to bother with uh, with collecting the income here. Alright, that's fine as it is. Now, since the workshop is upgraded, we can now have a lot of warp fuel, which means we can swap around some army stuff. It also means we should be able to unlock more weapons teams. A warp log Gisele unit and the rattling guns. Oh, that's nice. Which also means we need to transfer more stuff to charge lock. As for what exactly we transfer. Hmm. We could do. We could do the warp fire throws. I do like them in this army, don't get me wrong. No, I, I'd like to keep three. We could give him the poison when Globadiers. They're decent here, but, uh, yeah. And they're very short range. I mean, similar with the warp fire throws, but we can at least use these guys to be a little bit more tanky when uh, the Doombringers are out front. And then these guys directly behind them. And we have the warp log Gisales and the Zap Zap to act as the anti large. And then if we were to replace the play clock catapults, we'd replace them with uh, poison wind mortars anyway. So yeah, I guess we do that. Hmm. Let me see here. One second. We are unlocking two things, right? Weapons team. So we would be unlocking the eye takers, warp log gisales, and the death dealers, rattling guns, which is two. Not three, because I was thinking maybe we give the Doom Flayers to charge lock as well. I suppose we could give him one Poison Wind Globadier instead. And I'm not sure why we would do that. What do we have in terms of unlocks here? We have the Thing Thing Hell Pit Abomination and the Doom Wheel. Oh, you know what? We could take back one of the Warp Fire Throwers. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Okay, I like this idea. And this will work. And though we'll need to build more warp fire throws for you, because you get them almost as cheaply as it can. In fact, maybe we'll make a front line of just warp fire throws for this particular army, combined with a bunch of warp lightning cannons, because you have the Warpstone Hoarder X2. Yeah, you know what? That would be a pretty interesting army. Let's say six to eight warp fire throwers, and then just or six to eight uh, warp lightning cannons, plus a bunch of warp fire throwers, and then about two to four doom wheels. We'll give you the war we'll give you the flares for now. And then you can replace them with Doom Wheels later. Okay, so to do that, what we first need to do is combine you guys and you guys to reduce your numbers. Like so. Kind of low on the melee there. Ah, whatever. Whatever, not a big deal. Then we'll go to the Forbidden Workshop, we'll check out the weapons teams. We now have the Craven Rounds ability, which looks pretty damn decent, and I think we're gonna get that. Unless there's something better. I do like the Missile Strength for the Rattling Guns as well. Uh, we probably want to upgrade the Warp Fire Throws as much as possible, as fast as possible, though. Ooh. Increase in range? Yes, okay, we're definitely taking the increase in range for them. But uh, yeah, since we're going to be using Warp Fire Throws quite a lot, because they're cheap and effective, especially in the early game, it does feel like we should upgrade them. And I am tempted to get Warp Stone Lung, but we don't have Warp Poison when Mortars a lot yet. And bonus versus large ammo, and this makes, a, ironically, this makes them better in melee. Hmm... All right, well, I definitely want Craven Rounds, and then uh, lastly, we'll ignore Warp Grinders for now because we're not using them a lot. It's basically between the Hazmat Fursuits for the plus 25 armor, I don't really care about the fire resistance, or the 12% missile strength 
for the Rattling Guns. A decent amount of weapon strength, but the ammunition plus 10 is a little bit of an odd buff considering we have the uh, onboard waste compactor upgrade already. And Gilly Fursuits doesn't all doesn't help all that much for the Gisales either. I do like the missile resistance, but these guys have such long range, it's unlikely that they're actually getting hit by stuff. You know what, let's go for the hazmat fursuits for now. Or we save this and spend it on the Doom Rocket upgrade, but then again we're not really using it that much. Uh is there anything that's for Doom Wheel Lords? Like an upgrade? Ah, yes, this. Superconductors. Weapon strength plus 12 for characters on Doom Wheels and bonus versus infantry. Eh, it's not a big deal. Anything else for characters? Cooldown to warp light. Cooldown to warp lighting for all characters. Okay, that's tempting. Armor 15 for all characters on Doom Wheels. Hmm. And spell resistance. Perfect vigor for Ikit on a Doom Wheel, you say? That sounds pretty nice as well. Double shot ammunition is not available to us. Wait. Double shot ammunition for Doom Wheels. Oh, and this is for characters on Doom Wheels. Huh. Yeah, so I guess this is the reason to keep Ikit on the Doom Wheel. It's that uh, he'll get a lot of extra upgrades for this. And while there's nice stuff in here, the gyro cogs won't really help us all that much because Ikit will eventually have perfect vigor anyway. I do like the armor, but he's already pretty heavily armored. And yeah, all this stuff, while nice, is probably going to give us less benefits than the uh, than the upgrades to these units right now. So let's get the hazmat fursuits, like so. Alrighty, new weapons teams available. Beautiful. Uh, so what we'll want to do here is make space for two units in Ikat's army. So which we'll do so right now. So you go here. You will take the two Poison Winds, as well as the Doom Flayers, and you will give one of the Warp Fire Throwers, like so. Then, Ikit, you are going to summon yourself the Eye Takers and the Death Dealers, which are going to be reasonably cheap in your army, and there we go, very nice. And oh, 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 no, why? <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> the Rattling Gun and the Warp Log to Zales. Why would you do this? Oh, this is gonna bother me throughout the entire game now. Damn it. <laughs> okay, and then here to act as melee, we'll take the dwarf thing menace. We'll replace these with doom wheels later. Uh, maybe the regiment of renown doom wheels, in fact. And then give the doom flayers to another army. Oh, 3600. A little bit lower now. Hmm. Alrighty, well, at least that's been decided now. Pretty interesting. Now, since. You get extremely cheap warp fire throwers. And we should probably build more. In fact, I've kind of changed my mind about what we're doing with this particular army. Let's do this. Uh, let's uh, change up what we're doing here a little bit. Uh, screw the Skaven slaves. We're going to deliver, use this army to deliver a bunch of uh, stuff to swap around with you guys instead. Which means... Master Engineer. You need... All kinds of artillery, plague claws, and warp lightning cannons. That's what you do, boom master. But because you're disciplined, you would also benefit from either melee or, well, warp grinders are melee, for example. Hmm. Or a bunch of clan rats or something like that. Whereas you would have no melee line. Just, well, the warp fire throws function as your melee line. Okay, so in that light, what we'll do is continue building Warp Lightning Cannons. At least six, maybe more. We'll be giving them to a bunch of... Ooh, you know what? Wait. Start working on these, but we'll, we'll also activate this to reduce the uh, costs here. And in fact, maybe we'll take this. We still have the artillery focus, so we should take advantage of it. But let's get a few more Warp Fire Throwers like this, and then we'll get more units next turn. And we'll build, like, a bunch of Warp Fire Throwers and Lightnings, and then we'll use this army to transfer to a bunch of stuff. And maybe, you know, stop on by at the Skull Island while we're here. Alright. That sounds like it makes sense to me. I hope I haven't forgotten anything. Let's see what we got in terms of buildings and moves. Liv, you're still searching for Clan Molder, so try to find them, please. Really tempted to just get that Undercity going. Ah, but we still got two turns anyway. Go, go, go. And how do you feel about us? Ooh, yes. And on Aggression Pact, yes. Yes, yes, yes. All of this. All of this, Festy. Festy the bestie. Uh, payments? Sure, give us a tiny amount of cash. 
All right, we'll do this. Then we're going to ally with the orcs at the massive four call. And they're also willing to give us a tiny amount of money, but I don't really care about that. Uh, yeah, we'll go defensive alliance. I, hmm. On the other hand, we don't really need to do this because they're going to love us anyway, aren't they? So what is the actual purpose of doing this? Like, we can still give them territories and we can still be friends with them. They'll always love us because we're killing all their enemies for them. So maybe there's no real purpose to doing the defensive alliance. And kind of thinking the same for Scrag. I was originally thinking we ally with him, and we may well still do so at some point. But the fact is, he possesses one pasture that we want and potentially another one. So maybe we can hold off on that. I suppose the last thing is whether we want to peace out with these guys or not. Uh, they're actually getting a lot weaker. We could peace with that, out with them just so we don't have to deal with them right now, which may be of benefit to us. How much money would you be giving us for this? 845? 547? You know what? Don't bother with the non-aggression pact. We might declare war on you in a little bit. Um, but our other armies are currently busy with a lot of other stuff that we're doing, so let's, uh, let's give this some time. Do this. There you go. He can fight other stuff. Not gonna bother with the non-aggression. If he declares war on us again in like 10 turns, that's fine. I'm not gonna be bothered by that. Alrighty, I believe now that's everything. A little bit of an admin-heavy start to this episode, but I'm sure it'll uh, change up. Uh, let's get that Sawyer here, as well as, I guess, the growth building? Escape and corruption control, chance of spreading plague. Yeah, let's get the growth building. All right, here. And if this place uh, can farm some food for us for free while rebellions come in, that'll be just fine. And honestly, if it can keep uh, other enemies distracted and not going into the woods, it would just allow us to keep these places exploitative uh, planning, and that's just fine as well. Now, actually, while we're here, commandments, do they need to be swapped around in any way? You are actually good. You don't have to upgrade anything else. So you, for at least five turns, can go back to exploitative planning. What about you? This is going to be upgraded, this is going to be upgraded, and this is going to be upgraded. Yeah, okay, fine. You're fine as you are, then. And Karakazor, no more upgrades for a while yet. Oh, wow. I didn't realize there was such a massive amount of growth here. That's shocking. Huh, interesting. Okay, well, that's great. Now let's end the turn. Unless we want to do something else with the diplomacy. Ready. Ooh, Barrow Legion. Now, they don't... Hmm. Generally speaking, it may not be a great idea to ally with the dead, but they could give us a decent amount of stuff for a few turns. And we can always betray them later. Once again, we're scaven. You know what? Let's take it. Let's take it. They're fighting factions that will always hate us anyway, so it's kind of irrelevant. We'll do the non-aggression pack. We're not going to do anything else. Exiles of Corn. They're fighting the Harbinger of Disaster, which means I think we're going to ignore them for now. Though their dislike of us is growing. But honestly, if they declare war on us later, I'm not sure I care all that much. Alrighty. Otherwise, I'm happy with the rest of this. Let's end the turn now and see what we can see. Alright, and we'll send Ikid down to Quinell, I guess. Hmm. Maybe I should have had uh, this Charge Locks army go to Paravon so that Ikid could have moved a little bit further. But not a big deal. At the end of the day, it'll cost us one turn. If Ikit can't reach Quinell in a single bound. Morgur! Hey, buddy. Have I ever told you I love you? Uh, join war against Carcass Sun? No, but we will... We will do that. Just not right now. Not for the... Not for 800 money. He's probably gonna take Brian. Now, I don't think that we care about taking their territory, to be fair. But we do care about sacking it and destroying the faction because it's part of our victory condition. Wa fails for the bloody hands. Zephbar has been destroyed. Morphic is a constructor, and so is Ikit. Ikit should have automatically been a constructor, but sure. Uh, how alive is this faction? Two settlements. Hmm. Winds of pain. Fine. I'm just thinking, dude, can we send charge lock to sack this? Eh, it's not really worth anything. Ooh, he could reach Helmgard from here. But then we'd have to declare war on Reichland. Which, ooh, and you can reach this. Oh, I do wonder if you can... Wait, what do we have here in terms of defenses? Garbage. And, well, there's some stuff there. You know what, maybe this will be worth a fight. Let's, uh, let's send Ikit down here. And if Chargelaw could take Castle Bastun, that'd be great. Low, eh? But this still feels like it's worth 
the fight, you know? Hmm. Uh, also, Ikid, you can have the Banner of the Under Empire. Uh, we are going to encircle this for now. Probably going to fight this, just so that we can make sure that we have any, uh, a battle that we can play. Let's also build you and you. Oh, I should have done that while Ikid was in the territory. Eh, not a big deal. So yeah, what do we do with Charge Lock? I'm a little bit wary of getting attacked by a random full stack with this army, because it's a little bit weaker. Um, but uh, if we could hit Castle Baston and destroy these guys, that'd be great. Ooh, whoa, 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 Luin is suspiciously nearby. Yeah, your army can't face off against Luin. He's probably going to go against Gregor here. Mm, but yeah, I think this means that Charge Law can't deal with this. And which means we either keep charge lock at Paravonks, Ikit's gonna have to deal with it, or we move him down to the Waterfall Palace and jump up here and take care of Gnorn. Hmm, maybe that's the way to go. Also, oh, you've taken Gristle Valley, eh? Also, we could jump up here. Right there. And to, oh, we don't have military access. And you're not willing. You're gonna be pissed about this. Oh, wow, your trade agreement's decent. Hmm. I do this for now. I really wish this. Oh, this is gonna count as trespassing, and he's not gonna be happy. We could waste a turn not doing that. But I feel like we should probably take Grimhold for ourselves if we can, even if it does cause a trespass. It actually kind of seems weird that you can go here, but not like here. Hmm. What's that, Grimhold, by the way? Can you actually take this? Yeah, you can. Even if your army ain't so good right now. I hope that you're not close enough to actually intercept us. Ugh. Alright, let's risk it. And Oh, oh no. Okay, wait, wait. Oh, that might have been an error. <laughs> I see that... Uh, I see that Balthazar Gelt is there. And yeah, these guys don't uh, particularly like the trespassing. But what can you do? Damn. Okay, well, the fact that Gelt is there, that is interesting. Most likely he's going to go down here. If he goes for Karakazor, he'll fail. But uh, he could attack Karak Buftar again. And it does look like he has a much stronger army than he did last time. He's got handgunners, he's got mortars, he's got uh, Eldred's Guard, and probably other better stuff. Oh, well, well, well. Okay, well, we'll see what he does next turn, where he starts moving, and then we'll get a few extra Skaven slaves. Zvorak is going to be in trouble if uh, that's where he goes. Though maybe he'll ignore this by virtue of the fact that we're here, though somehow I doubt it. Yeah, okay, charge lock, you're gonna come down here. You may need to help against him. Go, go, go. Inkid will have to deal with that other stuff. Alrighty, well, you know what? I don't think there's anything else to do in terms of... Uh, oh, wait. Recruitment, yes. We do need recruitment. Uh, let's get uh, let's get a few more warp lightnings. To go around to various armies and then start building more warp fire throwers. Huh. One, two, three, three, three. Why? Oh, okay, okay. No, no, I see why. I see why. Okay, well, let's just keep that for now. And let's have Ikit fight. Let's have him fight. Otherwise, there's not enough fighting in this episode. Uh, our food is not maxed out, so we're not going to get any extra menaces below. Just got to watch out for the enemy aerial units. And did we spend our points here? No, we did not. Okay, let's spend our points. You got two points. Let's go evasion and let's get you earthing. And we'll go flensing ruin afterwards because it's a pretty nice spell. And then a you, speed or overseer. Gotta go with... I mean, we do want extra powder. Let's go with speed. I mean, we're going to get everything here anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Oh, damn it. There we go. You got extra powder now. You're the level 15 one. And then you just can't reach it, but that's okay. And we'll get the um, the arms dealer after that as well. Okie dokie. It gets time to fight. I don't know why the camera turned. And actually, wait, before you fight, we have a Helm of Discord now, but we aren't going to switch out the iron frame for it. We have a couple trickster shards. I just wanted to see whether we have any uh, weaponry that would work here, but it doesn't look like it. What about ancillaries? You have the artifact hunter. You are good here. All right, yeah. Now we go.
start plan. <laughs> All right. Well, here we go again. This may not really be an ambush, but honestly, it may as well be. The enemy army, including a pile of. Uh, uh, of aerial units, of flying units, are coming in close to our side of the map. So they're going to enter right where all of our rattling guns and warp fire throwers, and hopefully this rattling gun as well, will be facing. Plus, presumably, into a howling warp kill. And it's interesting that uh, this is where we started. This is where we deployed. So they, uh, they really screwed up. They should have deployed on their side at least. Now, we've also about split our army a little bit. Our three units of warp log gazelles are facing this way where the first army is and we're going to hope to use our long range units to decimate them without needing the rest of the units which will take care of the reinforcements. Uh, I also want to take a look at some of these units as we haven't done so. So these are the new guys, right? The eye takers, warlock, warplock gazelles rather. Yeah, they got that, uh, huh. Oh, so they have a color scheme similar to Ikat Zap Zap. Oh, I like that. And I think the new rattling guns are also similar unless I'm mistaken, yes? Is it these? No, it's these guys. Death Dealers. Yeah, they've also got this blue and green color scheme. And doesn't really quite fit Ikit as much, but I still do like it. And yeah, we got the same blue thing on the Doomfire. Doombringers, rather. Warp Fire Throwers, Doomfire. Close enough. Close enough. Alright, and I suppose on the regular rattling guns and stuff, we do still have a lot of uh, blue as part of their gear pieces. So yeah, it works. It certainly works. And yeah, there's there's blue on it as well. Yeah, fine, fine, fine. It, it's all it's all nicely color coordinated, which is a great thing. Alrighty, well, let's begin the battle proper and stop getting distracted by all those units. We are going to move our Gisales forward just a teensy bit. As we can see, they're very close to being in range. And fortunately or unfortunately, I'm not entirely sure, the enemy is moving towards us despite being on the defensive. I suppose they want to attack at the same time as their reinforcements move in, but they have to contend with being hit by quite a few things as they go this way. In fact, we can't also we also can't see their glade guard because of their stock, or is it the Wildwood Rangers? Well, whoever we can't see, we're going to see by simply summoning the menace below and then continuing our bombardment of this army as the enemy has about a half a map of distance to approach here. Of course, the menace below will be done for. But our units will have sniped quite a few enemies as well. And yeah, the Gisales are really quite good at uh, sniping regular units, aren't they? They just rip regular units apart. There we go. I'd like to see how they perform against things like, I don't know, Executioners or Swords Masters of Hoeth or Chosen or things like that. Although I do imagine it's just as well. Well, maybe not just as well, but very well, I should, I suppose I'd say. And there we go, the enemy keeps moving forward and is getting absolutely wrecked here. All of these units are routing. The enemy reinforcements about to arrive in 10 seconds, though their first army has already nearly been destroyed and they've only reached about halfway to our own force. This is absolutely disgusting. I feel, just like last episode, with that howling warp gale, I feel quite bad for Orion's army. They're not going to reach us, they're going to get destroyed by the long range, whereas our medium to short range units have other things to do. Here we go, and the first enemy unit is on the field, it's gonna be their lord, gonna try to book it the heck out of there, and then here come more units. Onto the field where the warp fire throwers are, and here come the rattling guns, plus <laughs> Oh my lord, this is, this is horrifying. <laughs> This amuses me to just just great degree. Especially because it's Wood Elves. This is what they deserve. And there we go, a Brass Orb, a more Burnination coming in from our uh, Warp Fire Throwers and the Rattling Guns at the same time. And here come uh, the birds. We're going to let them move onto the field a little bit more. And then we're going to pop that Howling Warp Gale. And it's time to go after them as well. <laughs> yeah, and they're gonna drop out of the sky in droves now. And more enemy units will move onto the uh, move onto the map, but the way that Howling Warp Gale works is they get uh, they get trapped in it immediately. You don't have to retarget them. So, ouch. 
And the Hawk Riders are dead and the Great Hawks should be down shortly as well. Or Great Eagles, rather. Ouch. Yeah. They could do absolutely nothing. What a bloody mess that reinforcement was. And there we go. That uh, portion of the army is nearly dead, and our splitting of our army seems to have worked quite well. And oh, look, these guys almost... Wait, no. Ah, uh, it's just a menace below unit. Okay. I was thinking that perhaps the enemy got a little bit closer, but no, it doesn't appear that they got any closer than halfway. Damn. And very, very much a decisive victory, echoing uh, the battle against Orion last time. Alrighty, well, there we are again. Man, I, I've played a lot of campaigns over the years, going all the way back to vanilla, and I'm not sure that I've ever screwed over a faction as hard with such unfair battles as we've done here with Ikit against Orion. We've screwed Orion so hard that Nikari is seething with jealousy. But anyway, let's, uh, let's take this place for ourselves as well. Also at tier 3, that'll put us down to yellow food, which is fine. It will increase our construction costs, which is a little bit unfortunate, but we should be able to get our food back up and running fairly shortly. We could also sack, but I'm not sure that we have the distance, and honestly, 1,000 uh, gold isn't worth it. There we go. And here, I, I really want the pastures. All right, lovely. The place doesn't actually have to generate that much money, and fortunately, it's not so far to the coast that the uh, wood elves, or wood elves, high elves should be able to see us. And somebody suggested in the comments that we set up the undercity that blows up their settlement. Uh, there. Which is what? Settlement will be raised upon completion. That's the Doom Sphere. Yeah, we could do that to Lothurn. Somebody suggested doing that in the comments, and I'm perfectly happy to do so. Yeah, all right. Lothurn needs a nice blowing up. We'll wait until it's nice in tier 4 or 5, and then we'll blow it up. Uh, just because it'll uh, it'll be even more hurtful. Alrighty, now let's get to the alarmed tunnel. Uh, do you want to switch to expansion's plan and first reduce the cost slightly? We can build the rattling warns at the very least, and the pasture doesn't cost that much. And do we really care about the 200 money? We don't care about the 200 money. We'll save more money when we upgrade this anyway, so let's just do that. Alrighty. And then these territories will guard our... Uh, uh, our trees here. Can we take Castle Carcassonne? Oh, we can sack it for 10k. We'll still have to destroy Circo here, and we will also need to make sure that we go back to Castle Bastun and destroy these guys uh, before they come back with another full stack. And I'm 90% sure that they will be able to, so we gotta watch out for that. Otherwise, I believe we've done everything this turn that needs to be done, other than potentially building and potentially looking for Molder. Where be ye, Molder? Alright, factions encountered. We're nearing Helpit. Fortistrosk. Factions encountered. I don't see Molder. Skaven isn't here. Which means no Molder. Okay. Annoying, but we will deal. A couple more turns that I'm sure we'll find them. Just very, very close to the, uh, the Helpit there. Now. Buildings. Ah, look at all that lovely low, uh, a low public order. Uh, Skaven are so bizarre to think that you actually want low public order. Uh, let's upgrade you. Let's upgrade you. That's the Western Border Princes, and you will continue being upgraded. So we'll leave you as you are. To borrow, I guess we're upgrading you now. Do that, and I was gonna build walls here, but uh, you know what? Let's replace the breeding pit with walls. In fact. How much will this give us? Not a lot of cash, but I do want the ability to recruit storm vermin. So let's get that out of this territory, and then we'll replace the nest nursery with walls, I guess. Not that I'm super into protecting this one little tiny territory, especially since it's unlikely that anybody attacks it because our beastmen friends are here. But nonetheless, ooh, speaking of our beastmen friends, missions. Destroy Sestashal. Or destroy Circo. Well, I guess we gotta try to destroy Circo. I don't know who Sister Shaw is. Ooh, no, you know what? We're gonna take Sister Shaw instead. Because Circo's probably gonna run away. So there's no guarantee that we catch him. 
I should have checked whether we had destroy Circo as a mission before attacking that, now that I think about it. Didn't even think of it at the time. Oh well. Now, Imminent Rebellion, good. Building upgrade available, not one that we care about. Although the public order here is, once again, starting to become problematic. At the very least, the Oak of Ages can't be, uh, nothing can be done to it. I do wonder whether we'll actually be able to maintain these provinces or not, but once again, we don't really care if we do or we don't. Uh, skip the rest of that, end the turn, and let's see what happens. I'm very curious about Balthazar Gelt in particular, where he's gonna go, because this will determine where we summon a new army. I'm hoping he actually goes up to Grimhold through our Beastman allies territory, and oh, I just realized, because they've taken that territory, we should potentially... Wow. If I had taken the mission for Serco. <laughs> okay, well, there's no way to predict an underway interception, guys. It's not my fault, damn it. Out of resolve. Uh, ten food for that? Really? Okay. Okay, I'll take it. And, well, let's make it twelve food. I'll get that food back up and running. We green now. And we make in the map green as well. Alright, Rebellion and Telia, that's just fine. Faction destroyed Averland, that's probably our friends working, and... I don't know where Gelt went. Well, damn. That's particularly annoying, because if he's... Well, I assume he's here, actually. Okay, uh, Ikat Claw, Shaif, ready for duty, Infectike. Well, guess who's coming back? Infectike, that's you, buddy. It's gonna cost us 700 gold per turn. But I have a feeling Gelt is coming, so... Now the problem with this is, while we can certainly recruit a bunch of Skaven slaves, there's a good chance that you're gonna die here. Oh. Master what do you have again? You have Discipline, and that's it. Okay, so we don't care about you that much. Other than the fact that you have some levels. You haven't defeated anybody or anything, so maybe you build a little bit of a slave army. What do we have in the garrison, incidentally? Two more turns until that's upgraded. And by the looks of this, we actually need more slingers. Let's do this. Let's go three spears, four slingers, and... It's cheaper to build spears up here. Let's do this. And then more slingers down here. There we go. That should last us a turn. It doesn't actually cost all that much. Now, Shife. You need to keep building, recruiting rather, and get a few more warp fire throwers to be transferred. There we go, and that's actually 18. You know what, let's get four poison winds here. Something along those lines. And once again, this isn't really going to be an army, it's just to ferry stuff over. It's just that we have nowhere else where we can uh, and do that stuff. I'm almost tempted to build a couple of Gisales as well, mostly to act as snipers, as some of these armies are going to... Well, the Warp Lightning Cannons can function in a similar fashion. They have a little bit of a trouble killing lords, but any larger models they can certainly take out. Hmm, who would be killing lords here, though? You know what, we'll leave it up to the armies to figure it out, and we will... You know what, it's only 20 units, so that's not going to fill up both armies either way, so... Yeah, we'll leave it as it is. Alrighty, charge lock. Sending you to the Waterfall Palace right now, I think, because... Well, actually, we jump up here and head to Carrick Norn. Can you take Carrick Norn? I think you can. No guarantee that you can reach it from where you are here, but we can certainly give it a try. Away you go. And presuming that Gelt is out here... Oh, I really wish we had vision. 90% sure he's here, but then why wouldn't he move... Why wouldn't he have moved further? Is he at war with anybody? He is at war with these guys, so maybe they've gone close enough to him so that he's concerned and trying to react to it. Maybe. Also, did you lose all your armies? You seem to have lost all your armies. Hmm, okay. Well... Hold on to Gristle Valley for now. You can take Grimhold. And... Yes, I ought to resolve this. Yes. And we'll occupy it at level 1. Not gonna waste food on this, because there's a decent chance that all these territories are gonna fall shortly. Hey, get your Doom Player now. And then we'll take Karak Norn as well, and I guess we'll take Karak Asgaraz, and we'll build it up as a... Uh, 
as a fortress. Maybe we'll take care of Gazgaraz at level 3. I wanted to do the same, basically, and take Gristle Valley at tier 3, but now that these guys have it, we're gonna have to wait until, uh, uh, until Gelt destroys it, essentially, so... I'm gonna be a little while. Now, Ikit, you can't reach Castle Carcassonne, um, but you may as well. On the other hand, we're not at war with these guys, so we should... we could always come back down after we kill, uh... After we kill the elves here. Hmm. You know what? Maybe we do that. I'd really rather prefer to not allow these guys to come back. Now, we're going to move in non-march stance. I don't trust our uh, our friend Luan here not to attack us. We can actually move a little bit further. But either way, I don't think we'd be able to reach Castle Beston in one round, even if we did move a little further, so it makes no difference. Probably could have just gone into channeling stance, but then again, we're full, so that doesn't matter either. There's also a decent chance that these guys declare war on us now and try to take Quinnell, but uh, Ikit is close enough to reach it as well. That was not supposed to rhyme, but it did. Okay. Uh, anything else here? We were probably going to have to abandon these territories shortly. But we were never intent on keeping them, so that doesn't matter. Let's build the clan barracks. Let's build the... Alarm tunnel there, and what else do we need to build? Grimhold! I guess you're gonna go for the Rattling Warrens. Don't collect income, because we can't deal with you right now. In terms of your rebellions and Waterfall Palace, no. Anything else? Ah, live, okay. We are quickly running out of time this episode, but I would love to find Clan Molder before the end here. And there we go, help... Well, we found Molder, <laughs> uh, but not in not quite in the same state that I was expecting to find them. Hopefully, they can take help it. But uh, generally, early game AI Skaven armies are just piles of Skaven slaves. So if they get attacked by Tyrannic Catrin while sieging, there's a good chance they'll all die. Hmm. Well, either way, oh, you don't want a non-aggression pack? Three thousand for that? Uh, how about we join your war against? The Great Orthodox. Actually, I do wonder which faction is stronger. Have we discovered the Great Orthodoxy? Wait. Let me see here. Yes, we have. Oh, wow. The Great Orthodoxy is considerably stronger than Kislev. But honestly, it doesn't really matter who we declare war against. Hmm. I wonder how much money they would give us. Are you allied with anybody? No. Are you at war with anybody? Ooh, you're at war with the Ecstatic Legions. You are at war with the Ecstatic Legions as well. You know what? Let's ask to join war against the Ice Court, and then when we find the Ecstatic Legions, we'll ask them to join war against the Great Orthodoxy for more money. Alright, so Throt, where be ye? Likely could have Confederation, fairly low so far. Uh, Non-aggression pact, join war, Ice Court. Minus 08, okay fine, we'll give you the tiny amount of money. Good. And then this will make us a little bit friendlier between the non-aggression pact and the fact that we're at war with one of your enemies. And then we just have to make some alliances with your friends, like Wintertooth, for example. Do we know Wintertooth? Yes, we do. Okay, you don't like that? Okay, you know what? Let's go quick deal. Oh, wow. Looks like the uh, Exiles of Corn no longer want the non-aggression pact. Well, I guess we are not going to be able to get that anymore, so if they declare war on us, we'll be fighting Corn as well. Do I slightly regret it? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. It depends, because I want his territory, that's the thing. I think we would benefit quite a bit from uh, taking these territories and and essentially buffing them up before the endgame scenario. So there's no real reason to ally with Korn, even though I'd like to. Plus, there's a good chance that he'll get into a fight with Clan Moors, and he's fighting with Harbinger of Disaster, and uh, we want to... Confederate Moors, and we want to be friends with Harbinger of Disasters, so there's all that. Anyway, with that, I believe we are pretty much out of time, and I am going to have to call the episode here. Next time, Ikit will proceed up to Castle Bastun, and destroy it, and kill Orion and... Uh, Durthu here with charge lock for good, which will completely destroy all the Wood Elves except for Draka. Well, obviously there are other Wood Elf factions around, like the uh, Sisters of Twilight and whoever the heck's at Orion's camp, and then there's that Cathay faction, and then there's Lorelorn, and that scumbag Ellen Delling. I hate Ellen Delling so much. 
those those who watch my Valkyria campaign know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, but uh, yeah, all the Wood Elves that are here and close to us will be dead next episode. We should also complete the recruitment of Shipe's army, which will mean a free Skull Island, which will mean more money. And then we travel north to start retrofitting our other armies and attacking Soland and getting these uh, choke points up and running. Um, yeah. All right, I like that. I think we got a plan. Let's see if we can carry it out. Uh, don't forget to leave a like and comment. Stay tuned for more rats. All glory to the algorithm. And thanks for watching. Poor Orion, man.